Hi, today we're going to talk about electronic physician documentation. By now you should be pretty familiar with this model. This is our roadmap to our health record. And in the center we have our patient. Around the outside we have blue tiles which represent the things that are important to our patient. And then in between we have green tiles which tell us where we're capturing that information within our electronic health record. Electronic physician documentation touches on many of these areas. It is through physician documentation that we tell the story of our patients. We discuss our own clinical decision making. We report family meetings and document family input. And we record our responses to our actions. Currently we have a hybrid charting world. So some doctors are doing their notes on paper, some doctors are doing their notes in the computer, um, consultations, admissions, operative reports, and some discharge summaries are being dictated, transcribed, and then placed in the health record uh, electronically. In, in the end, what happens is that we currently are facing great challenges in trying to find physician documentation. And sometimes when we find it, this is what we do find, we find handwriting, and handwriting is often not legible. In addition, it takes quite a bit of time to find our information. I've been doing parallel runs on the floor, and I started to do a little study because I noticed that the physicians were spending a good amount of time simply looking for a chart. So I did several time trials, and I have discovered that it can take two to five minutes to find a chart. And sometimes if it's taken longer than five minutes, the physician will simply give up and do something else and then come back to it at a later time. In our current state, we do not have a reliable centralized problem list. There are some physicians who have begun to populate a centralized problem list, and that can be very helpful on those patients, but it's not a universally accepted uh, practice at this point. I don't know if you'll remember, but a few rounds ago, I did an experiment with Humber River physicians, and we had OTN set up between three different sites and three groups of Humber physicians. They were all given the same chart, and they were given five minutes to find all of the problems in that patient's chart. Our responses, we had one group that found five problems and we had another group that found 15 problems and the other one was somewhere in the middle. But the thing that was very clear to all of us is that we were unaware of the amount of time we spent trying to find the patient's problems. And it's not just physicians as healthcare providers who are spending time doing this, it's also other providers who are trying to understand what it is that we're addressing in our patients. So we could save a lot of time if we have a centralized problem list. Currently we do have transcription. Uh, most of our transcription is completed within 48 hours. If we have a stat document that we need to transcribe, we can call down to health records, flag that item, and have it transcribed within an hour. It is fairly expensive to do these things. It costs $1.55 a minute for everything that we're trying to transcribe. And it also is not appropriate for things like progress notes. If you're going to do a progress note on a patient, what you really want to be doing is communicating as fast as possible. A progress note is about what's happening right then and there, that day in the hospital. You don't want to wait an hour or two or, goodness, two days in order to have it transcribed. In addition, we also have to worry about transcription accuracy. I have an example here. It says, the infant was discharged to home with mom in car seat, which makes for a very amusing image, but there are many other kind of transcription errors that can occur that aren't as amusing. We also need to take into consideration the patient perspective. The patient says, how can I find my reports? And what do they have to go through in order to do that? I recently was helping a friend gather her documents in order to go to see a specialist. Not only do you have to fill out the release of information, find all the different hospitals and physicians, uh, fax numbers, and send that information there, but you have to keep following up with the specialist's office to make sure that they've received the faxed information. And sometimes, when the information does come in, it's simply not legible. So this is a lot of work that our patients are going through. So let's talk a bit about the benefits of electronic physician documentation. We're going to cover, cover several issues. We're going to talk about how it enhances our understanding, how it improves quality, how it improves safety, and how we can create some efficiencies through electronic documentation. 
First, I'll remind you that our goal at this point in the development of our health record is to create a digital mosaic of understanding of our patients. Instead of just gathering a bunch of information, we want to put information in a summary screen in a way that gives us a big snapshot of what's happening with our patient. And remember that understanding is about being transparent, it's about being legible, available, easy to view, organized, and having one source for all information. Reflective is about having a shared summary screen, having a cooperative effort, being able to see the visual evolution of our patient through our documentation, and having a centralized problem list incorporated into a clinical conversation. So now let's talk about improving quality. And I love this quote, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that his, it has taken place. And I think we often write a, a note about our patient and simply assume that we've adequately communicated our thoughts. But we don't really know that until the providers that are using our notes to guide their practice give us some feedback. Currently, we don't have a lot of that feedback, partially because some of our notes aren't legible, um, partially because we don't have a system in place to give that in a reliable manner. But we need to start talking about what is a quality note. There are some elements that I would suggest are required in a quality note. One is predictable organization. The other is some reliable, completed key elements. And another is a concise note. We don't want to read through a lot of redundant information in order to get to the pearl that we're looking for today. So as we move forward with electronic physician documentation, we will be doing peer-to-peer -peer reviews where we have the opportunity to hear from our colleagues about how well we are communicating in our documentation. Okay, so let's talk about how physician electronic documentation can improve safety. It is well documented that good, clear clinical documentation can minimize diagnostic errors. In addition, the benefits that we'll gain from having a centralized problem list allow people who are responding, say, to a code or to a critical situation to very quickly have an understanding of what those patients' issues are so that we can manage them quickly. Our centralized problem list has the ability to add a comment to our problem, which allows us to pull key information right to the front summary screen. In addition, doing electronic physician documentation allows us to avoid transcription error because they're not all amusing. Some of them truly are patient safety issues. How can electronic physician documentation improve our efficiency? As we have already talked about, we are spending an awful lot of time looking for our charts. We are spending a lot of time trying to find the problems on the patients within our charts. We're spending time trying to decipher our colleagues' handwriting, and then we're waiting for transcription. All of these things add up to time that we're generally not recognizing we're spending. Having, having an electronic physician documentation cuts down on a lot of these time periods. It allows us also to carry information forward. So you can start an electronic admission note. You can carry that history forward through to the progress note, if you'd like, and all the way through to the discharge summary. You can be building your hospital course as the hospital course is occurring, and all of that information can be delivered to your discharge summary, which could enhance our ability to, to produce a comprehensive document at the end of our, of our patient's hospital stay. In addition, information that is created electronically can be sent quickly to other providers. So we can send it through portals to not only family practice doctors and specialists, but even to our patients, which is something we'll be talking about soon when we begin discussing the patient chart. So let's always remember that digital is what we make of it. So we'd like it to be patient-centered, and we'd like to build it with our values in mind compassion, professionalism, and respect.